A fire incident basically occurred on, on the Cooper Valley side approximately um, 11.45 on the 3rd of September. Um, usually um, fires like those are caused by two incidents. One can describe it as, as two um, scenarios. Firstly, and the most common one that we occur is when um, residents or other transporters that bring waste to, to the site unknowingly would be carrying waste that might be um, burning. Now, once this waste is then disposed of on, on the working face or where with the other waste, um, it could further ignite when it gets exposed to oxygen and whatnot, so then it can not further and cause fires. Yeah. The second one, which is generally uncommon or doesn't occur as regularly, is referred to as, as um, or what we refer to as um, um, spontaneous combustion. This occurs due to basically uh, some of the processes that are taking place in, in a landfill, where through years of disposal, uh, deposition, um, and decomposition, um, generally or mostly when you find if there is a high content of, of organic waste, this then sort of forms like um, the process of compost also generates heat, and this heat can then also cause that there are fires here. Mm. So those are the two types of fires that you usually could, could have here. But the present one, our suspicion, although we are still working to determine as to what the actual cause was, is it's most likely that uh, it is waste that was brought up to site by disposal, um, unknowingly or undetected that that, had, um, that was already on fire, and then that caused this, this incident here. Mm. Um, our general response to this usually is um, you must also appreciate the fact that um, the waste in itself sort of acts like a fuel. Uh, we all know the type of waste. If you just look into your green willy paper that you put in there, um, that type of waste um, is easily um, ignitable or, or can burn. Yeah. Mostly what you'll find is plastics, papers, um, carton boxes, and things like that. Yeah. Those we can agree on that they are easily to burn. Yeah. So the waste body itself, um, the waste that is disposed of the majority, consists of, of this, our household waste that we then dispose of to the landfill site here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, the waste body itself acts like uh, a fuel itself if there's a fire that happens. So it's uh, sort of a delicate and an intricate process to get this fire under control. Yeah. So usually it's an assessment that happens, but yeah, um, the way we deal with it is either by suppression on site, um, there is equipment and um, and plan, and also uh, people that are knowledgeable and trained in this to, to respond to such incidents. So, suppression by um, water that we've got there on site, for, we're fortunate also to have a pond that we can draw water from, which is our stormwater disposal there, uh, um, which is available. So, with water trucks and all that, we can catch this water to the affected area and try to suppress this. Yeah. But also for long term, uh, as general operations as we operate, is also we cover waste with, with uh, 150 layer of, 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 we call it cover material, which is basically just sand um, material that is then taken from our borrow parts and other areas from site to cover off the waste here. So the models of guarantee is to basically uh, smother the, the fire from oxygen, because the more oxygen it gets, the more it burns you. So you want to smother it with, with a blanket layer of, of non vulnerable or impermeable material like sand to, to reduce this. Yeah. So presently, that's what we are busy with on site here yeah, um, to get this, this under control. Um, general protocol also, uh, emergency services are also quite out to just assess and see uh, what the situation is. But yeah. Assessment always is emergency services only jumps in and would deter fire if there is threat to, to life or basically property. Since this is a waste body, they would just um, assess the, the situation for us. And as we already know how to combat the fire, um, they would just keep an eye over that. Yeah. So presently, that's the modus operandi we are, we are moving towards. Yes. So the fire, we are fighting by suppression was what would and then covering the affected items off to then blanket off and smother this um, um, fire from, from oxygen and then in the long run basically that should be instituted.
So how does the process of dumping waste at the site affect residents close to the dump site? The site is about three and a half kilometers from any nearest um, residential area, if I should put it that way. Mm -hmm. It's off the transport pass and the nearest residents could be um, the University of Namibia campus, and possibly the new academic extensions there. So the near vicinity of the site is uh, residents is about yeah, three and a half kilometers away. Um, firstly, so when we cite landfalls and so on, those are also some of the, uh, the things that are considered when you are um, citing a landfill where to place it and all that. Uh, most ideally is that it should be be not within residential areas and as close as possible uh, as close as possible to to residents per se. So that's one. So in terms of the fire, yeah, obviously um, it's a fire incident. The smoke generated, but yeah, um, as we are saying, as we are fighting it or not, so we are anticipating that it shouldn't be having so much of a um, disturbance and issue to to the nearest residents. Possibly by smell, yeah, that could come there, or and then fight. Those are the only two that I can generally see that could affect the residents that are closest to. Um, to to whether whether those landfill issues. Mm. Yeah. So um, this is one of the oldest landfills in 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 the city, and um, it must be growing in size by now, considering the amount of waste that goes to the site every day. How do you control or reduce the amount um, of waste at the site, or do you have any plans to expand it? There are presently plans for expansion. Yes, um, that we are working on. Because um, landfill space, it's, it's infinite. Uh, I know, um, it, it's a finite resource, not infinite. Yeah. So meaning it has a lifespan on it. Yeah. Um, the one that has been designed has already been expanded three times already. So we have, we have had three expansions on it. On, yeah. So and presently, there are plans that we are now engaging in to, to provide additional airspace for, for, for disposal. Yeah. Furthermore, in one wants to direct waste from, from landfill. Um, that is how you reduce what ends up at, at the landfill. So you would rather look up upstream in the waste cycle, because there is a waste process and cycle that is there. So firstly, it happens we generate as residents or businesses or whatever activity we do. It. We are the first and the foremost that generate waste. So I think that is where it is starting, basically, that uh, where from generation, that is where we should look at to, to reduce what is then eventually sent to the landfill. Presently, there are some programs that the city is running for recycling and health source or from households um, that we have um, implemented with our other private partners also within the more, um, more of the affluent areas. Um, we refer to this as the clearback system where residents are provided with some containment form to to um, separate recyclable materials. Um, remember, previously when we were speaking, I was telling most of what we are generating um, is mostly um, papers, um, plastics, boxes, and all those. Yeah. So those kind of material are also recyclable materials. So they are separated out from the green woolly bin, and then only those material that are not recyclable and within the green woolly burn should end up at the landfill. Yeah. So we are talking of the concept of, of in essence, a concept of, of circular economy, meaning that diversion of, of waste and reuse of materials uh, by recycling or other means and that it doesn't end up as waste on the landfill. Yeah. So in essence, that is how one reduces um, waste that would eventually be ending up at the landfill. We want to assure our residents uh, know that, that we are we are doing the best we can with the situation. Um, um, it's not the first of those, so we are basically experienced and trained and also know how to, to, to be able to deal with, with the situation that is currently at hand.